we're just taking a quick look at this new Zendor Supervase V. So this is quite a capable unit, uh, quite a capable system as well. We'll, we'll kind of talk about the the system aspect of it more a little bit later. But just you know, just as a standalone unit, this is a the, the the big news here basically is that just this unit, just you know what you see here, can do both uh, 120 volt and 2 240 volt at the same time, right? So this is the the big news. This is kind of like the industry first. And we do get all this, you know, all the specs on this thing are great as well. We'll, we'll talk about that here more. But let's just kind of jump in and go like basically straight to the, the battery situation here. Because there are two different batteries that are going to be available with this unit. Now, right now, it appears only the LFP version is available. So, um, and again, at the end of the video, I'll kind of come back to this and kind of talk about the, the, uh, the pros and cons between the, you know, the LFP and the semi-solid state. But, um, you know, just to kind of, you know, go over what's, you know, what's going on here. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be looking at just the, the blue numbers here at the top uh, in this video. But basically, you know, it's very simple. So the unit is 4.6 kilowatt hours. And then the extra batteries are, you know, those are 4.6 kilowatt hours as well, right? So, this, you know, these are, this is 4.6. Uh, kilowatt hours, you know, the main units 4.6 and then you can just, you know, you can just keep expanding. Now, the one thing that they, they kind of show here um, in this little diagram here and just, you know, one thing to note is that you can only do up to four, uh, you know, expandable or they call them satellite batteries. We'll, we'll talk about <laughs> we'll talk about why they say that again uh, towards the end of the video, but you can only do up to four per main unit right now um they do have this if you want to get crazy you know they do have this um home panel system we'll talk about again why you might want to go that route um you know but you you can do you have to get two main units and then you can use that so yeah we'll talk about that and now for the charging specs this is all you know it's really really good stuff now <laughs> this is actually quite confusing if you're just kind of you know looking at this there's <laughs> numbers all over the place but let's just let's just kind of break it down and try to make it easy for you um, you know, basically charging from the wall, from just a standard wall, you can get up to 1800 watts. And they do have a switch to kind of slow that down if, if you're kind of worried that's too much for, you know, for the circuits in your house. You probably want to slow that down a little bit. Um, and then you can do 240 volt as well, like from like a EV, well, they show you yeah, right here. <laughs> they show it right there, 3600 watts. So you can do actually 240 volt input on that as well. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a good number there. And then uh, for the solar, solar, 3,000 watts going into that. Now that's a, a XT90 connection. So yeah, that's good stuff. And then basically over here, what they're saying is if you were to like max out every input this thing has, you know, in theory, you could do up to 6,600 watts. Now for the output ports, we do get a lot of options here. Uh, well, we'll talk about the USB stuff here more in a second. But, you know, for, for the AC stuff, right, it's kind of the, the big thing you probably want to know about. We do get uh, four 20 amp outlets, um, and then we do get a 30 amp, right? Like for your RV or something like that, or transfer switch. And then this one here is the 240 volt. This is the, you know, the big news here. You can, you know, you can output this right from the main unit. There's no parallel system. There's no, you know, nothing like that is necessary. Now, you know, one thing to note, only 16 amps. So you're still only gonna get, gonna get about that, you know, 3,600 watts, 3,800 watts. Uh, max out of this thing, you know, you don't get you don't get more power than what you know the the uh, the 120 volt can do, right? So that's just one thing to note. If you want more power, you know, you got to go with that. Uh, you know, you got to get the two units, and then you get that that home panel system thing that I talked about. And then you know, we do get a lot of DC options here as well, right? So uh, it's actually on the side here. Um, we do get the Anderson, which is nice to see in a 30 amp as well, right? So they got they really got you covered if you, if you want to do like the RV stuff. And then you can customize this unit, you know, as far as how it looks. If you like a little bit of ambient light, you know, it's got the, the different colors. And I believe you can shut this off as well. And then this is kind of a, a cool little feature because, you know, this unit does weigh a lot. This is, you know, we're talking around 130 pounds. Um, it does have this feature where basically, you know, there's a little motor on, on, the, on, the, on the wheels here that... Well, you can power it, right, to move it. Now, you know, it doesn't steer or anything like that. You kind of got to get it pointed in the right direction, and then, it, then it'll, it'll go, uh, which is nice, you know. Uh, or you can just pull it, you know. You can just pull it, too, either one. And then for the satellite batteries, so the reason they call them satellite batteries, uh, not just expandable batteries, is because they do have, you know, the ports here. 
<laughs> you know, basically you can charge them independently of the unit. And we do get even uh, some DC output on there, right? But they do give you a car socket on there so you can actually take power out of it as well. So they are, you know, fairly usable on their own. Now what's really cool about these extra battery, or <laughs> excuse me, satellite batteries, is that the way they have these uh, set up, so this is the, the female battery port right here on the unit. And, and as you can imagine, uh, you know, what you see here, basically it, it allows these units to stack, right? So um, you can stack these together, again, up to four. You know, you can go four high with these. Four, come on, four high with these. <laughs> and then um, the thing is you don't need cables. You know, you don't need a cable here. You don't need a cable here attaching each one now obviously as you see there is a giant cable kind of going to the main unit yes but um you know it's basically just that one cable no matter how many batteries you have here you know up to four there's only going to be that one cable because you know these plug into each other there on that you know that port <laughs> that that port that we just had up there right this one right there so um that's kind of a it does just you know cable management standpoint you know it just makes it a, a lot better than a lot of the other options out there that we've seen from like you know blue eddy and stuff and, and even jackery now where they just have cables all over the place now one thing to note about this battery stacking uh setup here <laughs> is you might notice that in some of these images they have a battery on the unit and then in some of these other units or images excuse me they have the the battery stacked separately now this is because if you want to put the battery on top of the unit uh, you know the main unit you can only do one right so uh, you, you can only put that one battery up on top of a main unit if you want to have more than one of those those satellite batteries then you got to start stacking them independently now why is this um, probably because these main units move right especially we talked about that they have the little electric motor so it might just be too much weight or it might be just you know it might be just too much of a risk for it to tip over and then just to kind of come back to this issue you know LFP versus semi-solid state so here's, here's the thing, the LFP is the only one that's available right now. The semi-solid state, as you can see here with these green numbers, is going to give you more capacity. So it's, you know, each unit then is going to be 6.4 kilowatt hours instead of uh, 4.6. So, so yes, you do get, a, that's a pretty significant bump in capacity. But the thing is, you know, semi-solid state is still like, uh, it's not quite, I wouldn't say it's quite as good as LFP as far as the life cycles go. You know, semi-solid state, it kind of slots halfway between NMC and LFP, right? So, um, you know, semi-solid state is much better than just standard NMC batteries as far as how many life cycles you're going to get. Um, and as far as the safety aspect as well, right? It's, it's just better. But LFP is still better in both of those situations. It's still better, you know, it's still got more life cycles and it's still got a higher safety rating. So kind of what's interesting about this uh, to me is, is because these units, the main unit here, you know, 130 pounds, and this is regardless basically of, of which battery type you get, because you know, the, the semi-solid state is lighter for a given capacity, but you get a lot more capacity, right? So either, either one you go with, it's gonna be 130 pounds about, and then the extra batteries are about 100 pounds each. Again, you know, regardless of which uh, battery chemistry you go with. So the thing is because, you know, semi-solid state doesn't quite have as many life cycles as LFP. Yes, it's close. And because the, that safety rating isn't quite as good as LFP. Yes, it's still really good, but not quite as good as LFP. I think for me, I would have rather have seen... Um, I think I think it would have just made more sense. I mean, tell me what you guys think in the comments, but I think it would have made more sense if we would have had identical capacities between the LFP and semi-solid state. Identical capacities, right? And then um, if we did that, imagine what the weight on these on the, the units of these semi-solid state would be, right? Instead of this, the main unit being 130 pounds, I think we could have had that more around 90 pounds. And then the extra satellite batteries could have been more like around 60 pounds. So tell me what you guys think. Would that be more appealing to you? Because I think that would make this, this whole system a little bit more portable. And just, you know, if you need to move some of these things, I think that would have, that would have been a big appeal, at least for me. I don't know. Um, because the capacity is still good. And the thing is, you know, the way it's set up now, it's like, you know, um, you could always like, 
you know, you could always get one, maybe two extra, 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 or extra satellite batteries with the LFP version, you know, than the semi-solid state version. You could always just get, you know, a few more of those satellite batteries and kind of make up the difference between the, the capacity. And now, as usual, just kind of cap this thing off with a quick design analysis. Um, you know, there's not too much going on. They, they really tried to kind of, you know, keep this thing as slim and as compact as possible, given the given the big specs this thing has, right? So it's, you know, the unit is basically a rectangular box here. Um, you know, that suitcase style, yes. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting that kind of stands out to me is how these, these rear wheels kind of flare out. So I'm guessing that this is because of those, those motors that they, they put in, built into those things to have to assist you with, with moving these things. And, you know, what's un, a little bit unfortunate with that is just, I don't think, you know, not only does it just not look that great, but, um, you know, imagine the, the width of this thing, you know, the, the, the actual track <laughs> of this thing is going to be widest at, at the rear here, just this little area at the rear here. So as far as like tucking these units into smaller spaces, you know, um, it, it's just it's going to take up more space than what the other, you know, 95 percent of this unit is. Right. It's just going to be it's going to you're going to need a wider spot for it. Right. So that's, you know, a little bit of a downside to that. But, you know, otherwise, it's pretty good stuff. I do like this screen that kind of gives you, you know, tons of information. And then uh, what's really interesting about this, the, the USB ports here, this is kind of one of the big things that just kind of stood out to me. Check this out. We do get standard USB-A's on there, quick charges on there, uh, two of them. And this is something that they didn't have at all on the Superbase Pro, right? So that Superbase Pro, they only gave you USB-C. I mean, yes, everything's moving the USB-C, but... I still think that was a mistake, and, and evidently they kind of realized that as well. So yeah, that's just kind of a quick overview. You know, I didn't want to get too crazy. There's a, there's a lot to talk about with this unit, but I didn't want to get too crazy with it. So yeah, but hopefully you just kind of found this uh, helpful, interesting, and yeah, thanks for watching.